Okay, let's see what you guys thought about these questions. Number one, is this a feminist film? Group six, who has disappeared, uh, thinks no. We had a bit of a discussion about what counts as a feminist film. Um, they first brought out the idea that a feminist film should be a film that shows women who have independence and control and are presented as good people. And that is true. That is one kind of feminist film. But another kind of feminist film could be criticizing the way that society treats women. Or in fact, just criticizing the way that uh, people of different genders interact in this society. Um, it could be showing some negative content to send a message about what should be the ideal relationship between the genders uh, or the ideal way to treat women. When I presented this idea to uh, this group, they thought that this film did not fit that description. To them, this film, yes, showed how women are mistreated in that society, but the purpose, according to this group, is not to make the women uh, seem better or it's not to make us be, uh, think about the better way to treat women. It's simply to show us how bad the men are. Uh, in other words, uh, for this group, the film is using the women to show us how bad the men are. It's not necessarily promoting feminist values. Um, now, I think the difference between these two, right, uh, showing how bad the men are and uh, criticizing society, I think the difference is very <coughs> small. They're not exactly the same, but I think they're not entirely different either. Uh, but you can come up with your own thoughts on this question. Question two is Baxter a good man? I talked to uh, that group over there and they said no, Baxter is not a good man. And the reason is because, uh, as this group said, Baxter, he helps the other men who treat women terribly. Maybe he presents himself as like not as bad, but he's not exactly a good man. Like being less bad does not make you good. Also, did you notice the first time that Baxter got promoted? Uh, he got put into the, his own office for the first time. Uh, and then at the Christmas party, the first thing he tries to do is, again, to bribe Miss Kublik to date him in order that he can promote her and give her some benefits. He's behaving exactly like his boss is behaving to him. It, this tells us that maybe the only thing separating Baxter from being an actually bad guy is that Baxter doesn't have a lot of power. At least at that time in the film, at that part of the film. Uh, of course, later on, when he does have a lot of power, he realizes that uh, it's not what makes him happy. But throughout most of the film, he is only less bad, not exactly good. So the second part of this question, is there any good guy in the film? This group pointed out the doctor. The doctor seems like a good guy, right? Uh, he helps cure people. He helped rescue Miss Kublik. But think about how he did that. He, he tried to wake her up by making her smell something, and then he kept slapping her. And OK, so maybe they used to do that back in those days. But then like uh, when he was trying to, he was going to inject something into her arm. He's trying to find the blood vein. And he finds it and he says, nice veins. In Chinese, I think it was translated into something like uh, so easy to find or so clear. But in English, he said, nice veins. Just like you might say, nice shoes or like nice hat. It seems like the way that he uses language also is treating this woman as more uh, of an object of appreciation or uh, something to admire and less like a human being. But at the end of the day, as this group pointed out, he is a very professional doctor. He does his job. So 
if in this movie the best man we can find is simply someone who is professional and not someone who is caring and kind and virtuous, that doesn't say much good about the men in this film. Um, this brings also this brings up a related issue of um, objectification in the medical industry. Uh, there's been historically there's been a problem of doctors looking at patients as bodies instead of people. Like this uh, patient is sick. I need to find the problem. I need to solve the problem, and not uh, how well is this patient doing? Are they happy? Are like looking at them as people? So there's also this history involved. Uh, question three, group two is not here, so this is my question. When they were trying to wake her up, they were walking her around, like back and forth in the room, um, and the camera doesn't move. It stays in the corner, and so when they walk this way, we don't see them. When they walk back, we first see their legs and then their whole body, and then they walk away again. And this scene goes on for quite a long time. They go back and forth like four or five times. Why present it this way? Uh, my thought is that this removes us from the situation. It makes us feel detached, totally. So it's like we're not part of the story. We're not on their team. We're looking at what's happening. We're observing from the outside. Um, it makes them look more like uh, animals in a zoo and not characters that we should care about. It's a way of turning the whole situation from a very serious drama into more like kind of a comedy, kind of a tragedy. We'll get to that later on in the discussion. Um, so we can see that throughout the movie, the feeling that we get is not just from the story, it's not just from the characters. It's also from the way that the film uses the camera. The way that it presents the story to us also affects how we feel. Question four, how important is the setting to the story? Uh, that group thought it's very important. Think about it. This story could not happen in a small town in a small company. It has to be a big company so that the bosses have enough power to control Baxter. It has to be a big city so that Baxter's apartment can be convenient for everybody. This is a story about city life working in a big company. And it also helps to present Baxter as a company man who most of his life is dedicated to the company. He doesn't have a high quality life outside the company. Um, it's a picture of capitalist slave labor. Number five, does the film have a happy ending? This group says no. It's better than a lot of the other parts of the film, but the ending is not exactly happy. It doesn't seem like the man and woman belong together. It seems like they're only having a good time that night, but later on, uh, Ms. Kublik will probably move on with her life instead of staying with Baxter. Uh, she's like, uh, he, he's helping her, but she doesn't really love him. And question six, is this a comedy or a tragedy? That group said, it's more like a comedy. There are some parts that are very tragic. There are some parts that make us feel bad for Baxter. But most of the time, whenever Baxter gets into trouble, we kind of want to laugh at him. We don't really feel like we're on his side. We're like observing this very ridiculous character trying to suck up to his bosses, trying to make a, get promoted. Uh, in any way possible. He's not a very admirable man. He's not somebody that we feel sympathy for most of the time. So according to this group, most of the film is a comedy, makes us laugh. Um, but also the reason we laugh is be precisely because Baxter is put in these very tragic situations. So the comedy and the tragedy reinforce each other. The worse his situation, the funnier we think it is. But also, the funnier we think it is, the worse his situation. So they they um, enhance each other. Okay, do you have questions about this film? Great. Uh, remember, you have to spend time outside of class working with your group to 
shoot your short film for the final project. See you next week.